to have Mr. Sergei Chivilov. He came all the way from Amsterdam. He's the founder of, and owner of uh, Moicha IT company. They've been selling premium tea over the last 12 years. Um, they were buying tea from uh, China and from Taiwan. And just recently they bought uh, 93 rai or 15 hectares of uh, ancient trees here in Chiang Mai area. And they will be selling uh, tea in Europe. So uh, why it's interesting because it's organic tea and it will uh, improve uh, tea drinking culture in Thailand and uh, maybe uh, Thai tea will be drank in Europe as well. So it's a great opportunity for Chiang Mai uh, to welcome uh, Mr. Sergei Chivilev. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting actually for me. It's, I'm really pressed uh, to have a lecture here in Chiang Mai uh, because as already Philip said, uh, for us, it's uh, one of the key projects at the moment, uh, this tea forest project that we do in Chiang Mai. Uh, let me tell a few words about myself. Uh, first, uh, yeah, I'm into tea and tea business more than 12 years already, and we have uh, around 30 tea houses in uh, three countries. Uh, I was born and started in Russia, but a few years ago I moved to Amsterdam, and now we are focused on uh, retail uh, projects like tea houses, like tea bars. Uh, in um, uh, Europe and also we have tea house in Georgia and plan to grow in close year open few more countries uh, so we promote tea culture uh, in a different ways not like only Asian or Chinese or European but we try to mix all the how to say feeling of the, all the uh, cultures of consumption of tea and to represent it in modern way uh, to promote the tea itself and also tea is a key to uh, consciousness consumption. Uh, so it's a par partially philosophy, partially daily drink, and partially just a lifestyle. And uh, here in Thailand, uh, we decided to start pretty ambitious thing. Uh, not just buy tea or resell tea, but really produce tea, because I used to live in China 10 years, and during this time I wrote this book. I can give it to you, and you can just uh, have a look a little bit. It's called Geography of Chinese Tea. And during this time, I a little bit learned uh, tea technology also, and uh, also production of tea, of course, and regions, and how tea made, and where it grows, the history, and so on. And after this long experience, of course, there is a way for more ambitious move. Uh, so I, would, I was really like, my most idea to, okay, let, let us do something completely different. And uh, then my partner Leo, who is also here, <laughs> come, came up with the idea that, uh, Sergei, I have an opportunity to buy a land here in Thailand. Uh, there is a lot of ancient tea trees. And I know that uh, this ancient tea trees actually is super valuable in China. And also, it's a really big market even, and it's very difficult to find uh, opportunity to buy the land if these trees. It's actually very expensive. and most of the trees already belongs to some family or to some company or to something, I don't know, entity, whatever. Uh, so when I found this opportunity, very perspective, and we start uh, our project, so we start building the factory, which was finished this summer. Uh, it's actually, there was a movie, my kind of life documentary, <laughs> uh, when we're traveling across our area, also visiting uh, other tea farmers, some local food, whatever, just, just my, I hope also a blogger, and I, actually in my book you can see QR codes, each QR code leads to the video about the same place. <laughs> so it's also my kind of small invention uh, in the physical booth, have this digital connection. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we started with the factory and we focused on production of absolutely unique tea, uh, which grows not like a tea plantation, but like in re really in jungles. So we don't use any fertilizer, chemicals. We just only trim the grass. The only thing we do. And the area also pretty unusual because you know there is a big uh, tea production areas like my, my salon, Vavi. But this is different area. You now see it. It's Maidan uh, district, and uh, there you almost uh, can find any tea. So it's only one tea factory there nearby. It's a, a tea factory of a rural project. So we just uh, decided to do some exclusive tea. Uh, in, now it's pretty small amounts, so we do only a few hundred kilo during this year. 
uh, but uh, it's absolutely unique because we do it manually also we don't use any machine for shen pour uh, production it's a uh, raw pour tea which is really common for uh, Chinese uh, production of the tea from ancient trees and also the purpose of buying this land uh, very important because uh, before we came some of the lands also was used uh, for other agricultural activities and some local farmers who don't know the value of this ancient trees and they just cut the trees and grow something else uh, because in China anyone know what is it but here it was not promoted yet at the moment now more and more local people know about this values of ancient trees but uh, before this was a production of miyang fermented uh, you know local fermented uh, tea uh, like cabbage fermented tea yeah and uh, so we decided so there was also opportunity to uh, do partially charity project yeah, where we can also save the trees and save the jungles because for tea you don't need to do any kind of agricultural activity you don't need to fertilize you don't need to don't need to do anything actually you just can harvest the leaves and trim the grass that's it uh, so the jungle can stay the jungle in this case so the culture of uh, wild tea is uh, very different from the plantation tea uh, which you need to fertilize a lot and you need to trim a lot and so on uh, so this is also kind of our um, not invention, of course, whereas uh, some other companies do the same thing, but we decided that so this is a good opportunity uh, for a company in general. And uh, this project is just an example of uh, similar um, projects which I run in different countries, uh, because uh, the same initiative, a similar initiative we have in Georgia, where we also bought the land and do more affordable tea, more mass market tea oriented. Uh, but uh, also use different kind of technology to produce in different way. Also, we do here the same. We don't uh, do the, like a black tea and green tea. We do some oolong, we do some uh, gaba fermentation. Uh, now we plan to do post fermentation like shupuer tea and some other pretty rare variety of teas, which is more uh, unique. So try to be focused on something completely different. And yeah, and, and what I already mentioned that we do similar projects in different countries. So uh, during COVID time, when China started to be completely closed, I start a few projects like this. Uh, and also before war in Russia, we started with uh, herbal tea production in Moscow. Now we do the same in Georgia. We try to find the opportunity to bring a uh, completely new vision of tea and how it can be presented to the public. Uh, because mostly, actually now we see it's a picture from local uh, Sladon factory, Ban Sladon, it's in Chiang Mai. The goal of the tea forest project is to show uh, the opportunity uh, when you can do something uh, completely unique with a very simple start, actually. So the main, uh, and also because we're here in a like, digital startup sign and a, in digital innovation, I can say how the digital uh, thing helped me to start it. Yeah, because I had I had a big YouTube channel. It's 140,000 140, subscribers. It's in Russian, uh, but uh, two years ago I started the same in English. Uh, it's still small, around 3,000. But now I'll grow into lo it will be my <laughs> next YouTube video <laughs> uh, here today. And uh, and I promote uh, all the how to say culture in different uh, variations and also uh, tea travels and also show to the people like you can do with tea something completely different uh, because it's still like more underground uh, subculture in most of the countries like all oh, we do tea ceremonies from some special tea houses and it's not uh, you can be a part of it if you're not a member of some secret community whatever but I want to bring the quality tea to the public uh, to be more uh, present and to be more, how to say, to, to, to find the ways how the youth can easily get, get be in touch uh, with a quality product. And uh, also we start a project with tea bars, which I do believe can be uh, next uh, level of uh, presenting tea to the more broad audience, good quality to more broad audience. You might be heard these uh, bubble tea concepts and some, I don't know, third and fourth day of coffee uh, houses, whatever, but with uh, tea bars, we also do sell high quality tea. And also we do some kind of non-alcoholic cocktails with the tea. 
and uh, this, uh, I have to say, the small bridge from daily consumer to the small bridge to the tea culture, you know, so then the people slowly get into the more mindful consumption of tea. Uh, the, the tea wear, with kind of uh, traditional Asian uh, tea ceremonies and so on. And uh, for a very first perspective, it can be like, oh, it's, a, it's still some niche thing. But I can say that uh, if we take uh, Russia as, a, as, as an example, uh, 15 years ago, this market was almost zero. But now only in Moscow, only we have uh, nine stores and we have more than maybe 100 tea houses only in one city. And I can also bring example for a small city Riga in Latvia in European Union, where a small city Riga have 60 houses <laughs> only from one owner, but also different other shops. Uh, so this shows uh, how we see that uh, something which was completely underground, which was completely not promoted, uh, not presented properly, uh, became a trend. And uh, the same now we see in Europe, because when we start a project in Amsterdam, for example, it was a very risky idea, actually, because people say, oh, no one drink tea in Netherlands. Anyone drink coffee? And even if they drink coffee, they drink pretty bad quality coffee. And no one will spend like, you know, 50 euro for tea ceremony. But now we have fully packed uh, tea house is uh, really pre-booked for a month in advance, whatever, because people really value something completely unique. Lately, a little bit switched to more philosophical aspects, maybe of tea and business. Uh, but I want to say uh, the main thing that if you do something unique and you do it with passion, it will work. Because you will anyway find someone who will be interested in that. And you can do a few tryouts, uh, even if you work in the same perspective, you can do a few tryouts and slowly uh, open up something. So with tea, actually, we tried anything. <laughs> so <laughs> any, any, everything you can try with tea, we, we're done already. And, and I understood that uh, if you move in, in the same time in many various direction, if this direction not work for a moment, okay, no problem. We will work more on this direction, like it was during the COVID. Like, okay, the houses was closed, but we work online pretty hard. And uh, okay, now like people go mostly offline, but we have tea houses for those people. And uh, so, okay, business uh, oriented, uh, like B2B projects now not start, but okay, we have retail thing and so on. So we all the time switching between uh, the opportunities. I do believe that uh, it's also not only about tea, it's important for any kind of business that uh, to be real, <laughs> to don't be fake because a lot of businesses now like, okay, what I will do? Oh, I will do that concept because it's successful. And people often uh, not even get any effort to do something a little bit different, uh, a little bit experimental. Okay, let's try something not completely different, but adapt it or change it. And uh, this uniqueness now bring more attention. And uh, I do believe, of course, there's a lot of concepts that can be just copy pasted and it will work. We have some markets, uh, you know, analysis and so on, and we can see, okay, this market are still need more similar businesses. But it's simply not so interesting when you're just copying. And uh, for me, all the time, uh, all the thing we do with T was a kind of passion. So the first, it looks like completely risky, insane, crazy idea. And after it, we are here, like for example, because we started it less than a year ago. Uh, we firstly, Leo just tried to take some just regular Thai tea uh, from a role project and some other partners and whatever. After we start uh, just to do simply produce tea from our plantation. And a light after we finally build a factory. And now we already, I'm here and I'm also participating in this uh, tea forest project in some international activities uh, and some exhibitions like we do in Berlin, like we do in Prague and so on. And uh, yeah, and we also do very good results on uh, tea testings of our tea. So, and it's all created from nothing in very short period of time. And I do believe that as soon as you have a real passion to something, as soon as you have a real, uh, how to say, uh, you're not afraid to try, it will work. This time not work, next time will work. And this, uh, the two philosophical aspects, I do believe, uh, are very important. The first is like never stop. 
and the second uh, never how to say never give up you know so just it's not work this time okay let's switch to something else let's do some next move let's switch to something else actually about tea also when, when I say it's uh, really present to me when I started with tea it was first I was a DJ actually I was into music and production of some electronic experimental music and when I switched to tea I found that there's a so big world of opportunities uh, because from retail tea houses to production from uh, tea bars and from uh, tea education and also uh, researching and also working on a book and it's uh, also it's a hobby of collecting of tea wear, for example also it's connected to antiques uh, because like most uh, famous types of poverty for example now you can find a sodbis it uh, costs uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for one collectible item tea and what we also do with uh, our tea forest project what we do limited bunches all bunches are signed and counted of course like 100 cakes only or 150 cakes only and uh, potentially we want to bring uh, opportunity for collectors to have uh, also uh, this proof of production of this cake and it will be like collectible item uh, it's already it's not all my own invention there's already similar uh, products in China like a uh, big uh, Chinese tea factories uh, also do similar projects like now, now we see uh, it's a tea factory in Vavi village uh, then they press the cakes uh, because we not uh, don't have our own uh, press yet we just uh, uh, cooperate with this factory and do compression of our tea cakes at this factory uh, so we do this limited production and also a uh, related project, one of the key ideas uh, inside the tea forest project is the adoption of tea trees. So we have for now these 5,000 tea trees on 15 hectares. And each of these trees can be adopted by some individual who want to support us in some point. It can be adopted uh, like for one year, kind of subscription. So you adopt a tree and you get some amount of tea also you can select what kind of tea uh, it's also a very interesting in initiative i do believe we already have maybe less than 100 subscribers yet but still we only started now and we uh, growing this project but uh, we potentially also thinking about kind of crowdfunding for this idea and also for our partners who want uh, to join us uh, with the buying of more lands for the first project we can also share this uh, as a potential opportunity because uh, the first uh, people who want to be involved in something uh, responsible and remarkable like okay I have some adopted tea tree in Thailand and as soon as uh, people who buy these trees we invest uh, most of the money to buy more land and to protect this land from cutting for agricultural activities because as already mentioned this land uh, we preserve only for harvesting of tea and we do not cut any trees so if there are other trees, we still keep it and it's, it looks like jungle, uh, not like a plantation. And so this is also one of opportunity how to connect the marketing and real value. And I do believe that uh, in modern times, the only businesses which brings real value, not fake values, not like, oh, I only want to have some more, more money, more success, more money, more success, this not works already. And people feel it very easily when you promote your business when you promote your idea if it's only focused on earning more money it not works it maybe works uh, temporary for but in long term it not works other thing which also relate to what i'm doing i have uh, partners in any country work and i do believe that uh, from business strategy if if you want to go fast you can go alone but if you want to go for long distance you want to go with someone and uh, so this is why we have Leo here yeah, and we have some partner Andre in Georgia and we have my other partners in different countries and I all the time I'm cooperating with some people who are still in the land <laughs> uh, to work together so my job is uh, mostly uh, or about promotion and ideological and find resources and partial investment and so on uh, and uh, so this is also a very good collaboration uh, because you can't work on land uh, by your own if you uh, focus on different perspectives so you must be focused on something uh, special uh, to be successful actually because if you be like one uh, man orchestra it will not work 
also. I have I had a lot of experiences uh, with working alone and working with partners, and I do believe that uh, the second is more reliable and more profitable. Actually, even from some point, you can easily switch to something else and open new projects and so on. So I try to be compact actually, and maybe uh, if you have some questions, uh, you can ask. I can give you a microphone uh, because the T is really broad term, uh, them, so I can say more about T, but if you have any questions, I can easily ask. Uh, really nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. When you are transporting to Russia, uh -huh. I mean, when you are transporting the T uh -huh. to Russia, yeah. which logistics you are using, sir? In current moment, we use mostly air freight because of the sanctions and so on. It's with a container is more difficult, even sometimes uh, because we focus on production of exclusive tea, so it's not cheap tea, it's uh, up to from few hundred euro to 1000 for one kilo in retail. Because of like we say, uh, for example, five employees in the factory produce uh, maybe 30, 40 kg a month only because it's jungle for harvested tea. In this case, uh, we don't need to economy on the logistics. But um, uh, the same, like, because we also, our idea to promote not only our, our product, because like t forest project pro product is like premium product, but also in Thailand there's a lot of other uh, production uh, which we cooperate, a few factories which we choose and which we tried, uh, who have good knowledge, good skills in uh, tea production, uh, some in Wadi village, some in my Salon village some in different uh, other uh, places. For these more affordable teas, uh, we, of course, we can use containers. Uh, but now, because we, um, uh, my previous, like, biggest part of business was in Russia, but now, uh, from this year, because of current issues with war and so on, we decided to more focus on growing uh, overseas. And I even now delegate uh, all, most of the actions, most of the operational work to my partners, so I'm not living in Russia now. So my personal focus now on more spreading uh, this tea to European market and potentially to American market because I do believe that uh, from different perspectives Thailand is, sounds good. <laughs> uh, first politically, second uh, or because of uh, quality of material because it's really clean here and uh, no pesticides, no whatever and there's no bad reputation because some uh, Chinese uh, production have uh, this bad reputation about uh, pesticide control, even the Indian and Sri Lankan tea the same, even Kenyan tea. But uh, Thailand tea don't have this reputation because Thailand tea no one know at all. <laughs> so it's not promoted yet. So there also was a kind of very ambitious idea to promote the Thai tea in general, not only our project, but Thai tea in general. Because 99.9% .9 of tea lovers all across the world, we don't know anything about Thailand. Because most of the companies uh, who sell tea here they sell it to China and they sell it as Chinese tea or we sell it to Taiwan and we sell it as Taiwanese teas or even there is a, a some uh, I don't know who is the owner but some factories are producing matcha tea for example and I do believe it sells sold as Japanese matcha because but the soil uh, is pretty fertile here and also uh, the clean soil you yeah, know and also the climate uh, it really fits the same uh, requirements which needed, which uh, we have in uh, China or which we have uh, in Japan or in Thailand, Taiwan, whatever. So there is no difference. The only thing we need to care about is the technology. Yeah, now it's uh, the amount of production in Thailand really small, uh, but it's very a possibility to create a product which have more, how to say, more profitable. Even if you just compare it with lychee <laughs> or some other berries, uh, tea is more profitable. Uh, but uh, this tea must be rightly made, it must, it must be right technology. And I have uh, similar examples for Georgia actually, and even for, for India, for example, because I have a friend also in Darjeeling uh, who learned in Taiwan, and they bring this uh, technology to Darjeeling, and they start selling their tea three times more expensive from the same land, because we just improve the technology, improve the quality of tea. And I do believe that uh, it can easily be implemented here because here we have already right technology, which is Chinese technology. Because if we talk about the quality of technology, of course it's Chinese technology because they have knowledge way more and way more broad of varieties and cultivars and whatever. And the Taiwanese people who brought, who bring here the tea tradition actually, 
uh, we have uh, already very good start, even better than any other tea production country. So this is why I do believe that uh, my force also help not only us but also other businessmen because I have the same experience uh, in Russia when we started tea houses. I started promoting tea culture in general. I have some videos that have millions of views of how to present tea ceremony, whatever. And now these videos uh, help to build hundreds of businesses uh, in the same perspective. So I um, feel myself a kind of a missionary in this field. Yeah, this is what I can say, maybe not only about logistics. <laughs> yeah, we have some yeah, sound. Maybe more questions? Yeah. Are you going to apply for protective designation of origin yeah. for your tea? Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope uh, we can do that later. The same with organic certification and uh, other requirements which needed like to be more presentable for a company. But uh, with us, we have very good, uh, how to say, benefit. Uh, actually, here we do hand roasting. And uh, all our shampoo tea only made on this small wok <laughs> by hand and also rolling by hand, no machine at all. Uh, black tea we do on the machine and also dry on the machine, but raw poor and white tea completely handmade. Yeah, so actually about this uh, proof, I have these videos. <laughs> I have ability to bring uh, tourists, like we now also start with tea tourism. It is our additional activity. Uh, we bring groups uh, with a kind of partially educational, partially leisure tour across Northern Thailand because Mostly then the, the, you see, you hear something, tourism in Thailand, you see, okay, the beaches, the south of Thailand, Phuket Island, whatever, uh, Pattaya, and, but, uh, but in, uh, now we can see that we built completely different view of Thailand for these groups we already brought here. We already bring three, three groups. Right now only just finished the tour for, which I made uh, last week. Bring these people and they see in real all we're doing. Uh, all our forests and all our plantation and factory and whatever. And this kind of proof, I do believe in modern times, are even more needed than any kind of paper with a kind of, you know, marks or whatever. It's both needed. But I do believe that this uh, real showing of your inner processing, which most of companies uh, not share. Uh, we share, we're pretty open. This helps to create a bridge of uh, trust between the customer and us. Uh, so I do believe that this works better. And also main thing that because we produce tea for ourselves, we don't need to search for a client to sell this tea. <laughs> uh, so we have our own retail chain. And this is also help us to be more, be sure about how we grow later. So this is also a good uh, uh, opportunity for our investors who buy in land, we can prove all. Oh, you, we invest in your land, but how do we sell? I said, we sell to ourselves, so there's no problem to sell. And this is also a very huge benefit for business concept in general. So we have all the line from the land to the final uh, customer. It's all our, ours. Uh, actually, there's also in initiatives, the similar initiatives in tea communities all around the world. Like it's called the kind of um, direct farm sales, whatever. Uh, or kind of crowd farming, maybe you heard these terms. And actually our activities are pretty close to this. Now, for example, I'm signing the first adopted sea trees because this film was filmed in May, uh, very beginning. After that, we already improved our tea factory. Now it's, uh, on this movie, it's not finally constructed. Then I, we have these small plates when we write the name of the actually person who adopted the tree and put it on the tree. Uh, so this is how we uh, do this adoption. Uh, and also film a small video and also later than the harvesting the tea, we also film the video and send it to each one, each person who adopted the tree. Uh, yeah, so for back to your question about, uh, of course, we will do all these, uh, how to say, legal steps. Uh, I think it's really needed. Uh, but it will be next uh, step, of course, because uh, first we need to have earnings because for example, only to have organic certification for one year, you need to pay $20,000. And uh, for a small production company, it's mostly almost impossible. And the same uh, I can say about even some Chinese production because uh, no one trusts, uh, not, not no one, it will not the right term, but many people not trust uh, Chinese manufacturers because uh, it has a bad reputation about 
uh, fertilizers and some uh, chemicals used, uh, but some farmers also do organic now, but they just don't even know how to produce uh, it better, how to don't use fertilizers. They don't have enough education. And this is what I already done before in China, and maybe as soon as China open, we'll continue on this point to educate farmers how to grow organic. And how, and I, even, even for some farmers, I say, okay, I will buy this tea more expensive, don't use that. And this helps them to understand more clear how to act with that. So yeah, so this actually the forest, it's after trimming. Now these trees are more higher. Uh, there is an interesting story about the trees in general. If you just leave it, it will grow five meters high or even higher. And uh, this makes uh, harvesting impossible. Or if you trim it like a small bush, it makes it not a tree, but a bush. So we do something in between. Uh, and also the Chinese do the same uh, because we only take over this land uh, in this period of time. We just trim it and maybe this high, around two meters something. And uh, after it grow, we just uh, make a shape of the tree in the form which helps our tea pickers to harvest it more convenient. Yeah, so this is also important. Yeah, but this is actually the forest and you can see how it's, it's just located inside the jungle <laughs> in the national park. There are some territory where only the trees, but most of the forests are covered with other trees also. So we just grow together with uh, other trees. Some people call you the tea culture ambassador. Yeah. And when you started your business, how many years did it take for you to go international? Uh -huh. And what, what was the signs that uh -huh. told you, yes, this is worth expanding? Uh -huh. Oh, well, thank you for the question. Actually, it's a very interesting question <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah, from very beginning, I was super ambitious, maybe even too ambitious. Uh, so I'm, I'm even now, I think I, the broad uh, the ideas I share with my partners and friends, they say, oh, you're crazy, it will not work. Uh, some of the ideas really not working at all, but I have so many ideas. So far, some of these ideas start working. Come being international, actually, it was from the very beginning because to harvest proper tea, I need to go to China. And I need to learn Chinese. Uh, so, okay, Shohan, you, I speak fluently Chinese, pretty fluently. Yes, this already brings me a picture of I can work overseas. Because when I start working with farmers inside China, I also already before had some connection in the markets in China, like tea markets in Fansun Tea Market in Guangzhou City, or uh, Malindao Lu in uh, Beijing in uh, capital of China. Uh, so I, my first international business started from connection of farmers in the final shops in China. And I have some even, how to say, profits from this. Uh, not sometimes in money, but just in relations. Because, for example, I help a farmer to sell more to my friend in Beijing. And after that, I have better pricing or some credit and goods and so on. So I built this kind of relations. I learned a lot from Chinese. Uh, I learned a lot of Chinese uh, speed work fast, work efficient, uh, be honest, and uh, be, how to say, initiative. All the time, create something new, don't stop. And uh, this helped me to understand, okay, who stopped me from work abroad? And once I had a travel to Taiwan, because before I also organized, and now also plan to organize tea tours across different countries, not only here, but also Taiwan, China, Georgia, and so on. And uh, I met a tea tour in Taiwan, uh, and I met one, one my friend who is a big businessman, and I just shared a crazy idea. Oh, I had an idea, open something in Europe, like tea house in Europe. But in, in that time, I already have 17 tea houses in Russia, in uh, 10 cities for that kind, of, maybe nine cities for that time. And it was like, okay, mm, it's a crazy idea. And he somehow feel my passion, and he somehow support this crazy idea. Uh, we invested around 1 million euro in Amsterdam Tea House. Uh, it's still a risky project, even till now, but we almost on the break-even point after one year. On the market, there is nothing similar existing at all. Imagine, it's Amsterdam, an Asian tea house. We, we not, not call it Chinese or Japanese or whatever, it's just tea culture club. You can easily find there was a sign, mochai.nl. It's our website and you can browse on Instagram, whatever. I do believe that it's a very successful model because uh, we build it in a different way. The first is a tea bar, the second is a tea house, the third is a shop, the fourth is a place for events, like lectures, like concerts, like master classes, whatever. And also 
uh, this is a B2B corporation, so we support restaurants. So it's a lot of, uh, uh, how to say, activities across one small tea house. And uh, as soon as I built this first, of course, I understood it, it will work. And, and there is, a, of course, uh, there's a partially, oh, this is actually a uh, movie from Georgia. Uh, from a, it's, you see the difference <laughs> between plantations. Yeah, so this is uh, our factory in Georgia. What I can say that as soon as you make first step is the most difficult. And imagine it was during COVID. So it was the beginning of COVID. I have a, a suitcase with money <laughs> and the uh, residents of Netherlands and nothing else. And uh, no relations, no friends, no one in the Netherlands. And somehow I just started actively, actively searching and uh, people somehow gathered. And I, th I think that there's a kind of luck that the thing they do, because uh, tea is something that really makes the people, joining people, you know, and this, this kind of business mostly came with uh, certain people, because I, uh, for example, I heard a lot of stories about uh, Chinese people, that, oh, it's difficult to trust them, you can't work with them, and so on and so on, especially in Western world, there's a lot of this uh, fake, uh, how to say, fake, uh, impression about China and I say I never had bad experience maybe I have thousands of suppliers and I have maybe twice some problems and it was not their fault like maybe fault of logistics whatever I do believe that also there is a big uh, thing about tea it's actually our franchisee meeting from different countries and different cities uh, we made the meeting on our tea factory and just drink tea together and share some news and so on uh, this is how we drink tea actually <laughs> yeah so what I want to say, the years which really I starting to feel that I can do something abroad, maybe after seven years. After seven years, I'm constantly working and I start believing it, it's possible. Uh, but after you made the first step, it will work. Uh, but the main thing is a product. I do believe the main thing is a product, is the concept and the product. As soon as you have a product which fits the audience you focus on, you target it on, as soon as you have a passion to do that, and as soon as you have some uniqueness, which, which is a little bit difficult to copy. Because to copy paste the idea I do, take years. And I have a lot of projects which already started to do similar things. Even we do, for example, with uh, ceramic. We also have ceramic factory. And also we start from wood firing of ceramic, which is pretty uh, kind of uh, arti uh, artisan uh, tradition, uh, which came from Japan and mainland China. And, uh, and some people just start after three months copying this thing. It's okay, let them do. But as soon as someone copy, it means that they're in the back, but you're in the front. And you go all the time, you're developing the new value, developing the new product, developing the new opportunity. Never give up. Never, never think that, oh, I do something wrong, or I do something, okay, you've done something wrong. Let's, let you do your own mistakes, you know. As soon as you worry about mistakes, you will never build something completely new. Yeah, here's actually our tea plantation, and you see how differently looks tea plantation from tea forest. It's just a plantation. It's, and this tea costs 10 times more cheap than tea from Thailand, from the forest. Yeah, it's still good tea, but uh, it's absolutely different product. Uh, but uh, here for in Georgia, for example, how we grow the uh, price of tea. We do experiment with absolutely incredible technologies, which we also lately implement here. Uh, we do some GABA fermenting and some special type of rolling and uh, special type of withering. And, and, and we do a lot of experimenting in uh, technology. Through this, we have from 50 Georgian, maybe, maybe more, maybe 60 Georgian tea production. We're only three who do this. Uh, and only we who have enough how to say, marketing opportunity <laughs> uh, to sell it to more broad audience and to sell it by ourselves without any third party needed for that. So this is also a thing. Yeah, maybe more questions? When you went to China, uh, it's, um, how did you find the location of uh, where you were at and um, how do you find out uh, what kind of people you should trust or not? Because I heard, like, um, in Hangzhou, you, you heard about Shifu. Of course, Dongji, of course, of course. Very popular, mm -hmm. yes, in China. Like, uh, and it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And the uh, weather in Hangzhou is, like, special. They have, like, special mountain. Like, only, like, a small area. But um, it gets the premium tea. 
the best quality. Like, uh, so um, if you can find those kind of areas, such as like in the inland problem, like Rinan, it might be like much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's hard to trust them, like uh, those, those people. So um, how do you deal with that? Like, um, and, uh, and pick the location, the correct place? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for the question. Very interesting, very interesting question. Actually, this is why I love questions because uh, I have so much information in my head, so it's good to be focused on something uh, particular. So, yeah, first about Sihu Lundin, of course, I visited the area for a few, few times. I even know the uh, director of uh, Hangzhou Tea Museum, uh, Hangzhou Chaye Bolguan, which is one of my favorite tea museums, and they're really focused on promotion of tea culture in a way I like it. Uh, yeah, it's a very famous attraction uh, for Chinese people, not only Chinese people, because Hangzhou is a headquarters of Alibaba and a lot of uh, foreigners and expats living there. Yeah, but uh, actually I already shared information about my book, which is called Geography of Chinese Tea, which is my slow, uh, very short introduction how I search for the tea. Uh, you can just easily Google it. Uh, it can be found on my, our Dutch website. Uh, sadly, only now, only one place on the planet you can buy it, it's, it's there. Uh, yeah, so actually I work directly to the farm and only through this I can be sure I trust the source. This is why during 10 years I spent in China from seven months and longer. So actually this is why I, I often say even I used to live in China for 10 years because I was constantly traveling across all these regions. And I visited literally maybe third part of all counties in China, which is about you know five, 900 counties produce tea in China, and I visit maybe third part of them personally for many times. And I have video proof of it. I have thousands of movies, not thousands, but thousand, uh, 300 to be more precise, from the plantations. So I visit hundreds of factories personally, and I have these relations, and I have my WeChat contacts with uh, few thousands of farmers already present. And now we constantly cooperate with around 600 farmers only from China. I can name maybe around uh, 50 farmers from Taiwan and also with our own production in Georgia and Thailand what we're doing now. So which I'm implementing here in Thailand and which I'm implementing in Georgia, but I implement all the experience I get from these travels in China to our own production. So we can produce more types in one place <laughs> because you don't need to travel so much and actually for about Lunzin tea of course uh, and the same you can uh, say about this uh, uh, how do you call it in Chinese like Chaye uh, Yomin it means like uh, the tea have the power of a name like the power of a brand you know so uh, as soon as you have uh, this power of a brand you can easily do the tea by yourself in different region so you don't need to uh, have it from the same region it's originally was produced. But uh, because you know that Lunzin tea, for example, there's a big uh, uh, Guizhou uh, Liping County, there's a lot of Lunzin tea production, and also Emei Shan in Sichuan province, there's a lot of also Lunzin tea production. But uh, the main problem that all the people who sell this Lunzin tea, uh, they just name it Hanzhou Sihu Lunzin tea, which is mean the tea from Sihu, which is not true. And how we sell this tea, which we call it Emei Shan Lunzin tea, not from Sihu uh, Lake, but uh, from the uh, place in a uh, uh, different region. People don't like it. Even I heard from some Taiwanese uh, companies, uh, when I start to sell Thailand GABA, as Thailand GABA, not as Taiwanese GABA. When tell me why you name this tea is uh, origin from Thailand, you how kind of disclosure our secrets. And I say, because they resell it in Taiwan and name it uh, tea from Taiwan. Uh, I don't believe it's a good thing. I believe that uh, as soon as you have, as you, as you truly say from there, from which region or even from which particular factory, if it's not a commercial secret, if I can share this information, which is good with our own factory, can share this information, you know, it's also a very good benefit. I just easily say from where it comes from. And uh, yeah, to work uh, with the farmers directly uh, is the uh, only way to find good tea, only way. And this is why I learned the language, this is why I started traveling, because, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time, and this is why you also need the partners who work for operational in, in, the, in the, for retail, whatever, which I do not so much. So, yeah, this is only a way, uh, because it's not because of actually untrust, but just you, you need to try, you need to drink this tea. 
And this is why COVID brings so much mess to my business concept, because and this is why we start our own factory, because I need to touch, like here in this video, <laughs> I need to touch the leaves. I need to feel the real value, uh, not only uh, by trying the sample somewhere, but also only by touching the, I know, touching the soil, you know. I, it's my relations with the product. I mean, it's a little, little bit, maybe sounds a little bit esoteric, but uh, I'm not a strong believer, but I do believe that if you work with something, you must be passionate on it. You must, you must be go as deep as possible to the product. It doesn't mean that you go to some, I don't know, different uh, perspectives and different areas, but uh, you still must be in uh, touch with the product. And as soon as you can't travel to the region, you need to create your own region. <laughs> so this is why I'm here. If not COVID, I was maybe possibly uh, not even start this project or start it later or whatever. Uh, yeah, so the same with Georgia, actually. It's uh, not only for tea. Actually, you can say I have some sommeliers for wine or for coffee, which I don't drink uh, because I have too much tea. <laughs> uh, yeah, but still, it's only a way. Yeah, a question? Uh, the difference between safety standards between Europe and Asian region, safety standards, colors, Of course, like of course, of course. About safety standards, of course, the first is about the cleanness. And uh, we can talk about pesticides. We can talk about... Uh, uh, all the fertilizers used uh, for tea and for uh, the other agricultural uh, production. We are pretty strict in Europe and even uh, for some perspective more strict in USA and Japan also. So which is why actually it's good because it helps farmers grow organic. <laughs> yeah, so some Chinese say that uh, it means that we are not organic, uh, we are, how to say, accurate. Uh, we use some fertilizer, but in low amount, and it's not uh, harmful for health. Uh, this also works for some affordable teas, uh, because if you need to produce big amount, if you need to supply for cheap price, and you have no possibility to grow completely organic, it also works. Uh, but what I like that now uh, the development of fertilizer, the development of uh, agriculture, it's uh, the smart agriculture, I see the sign there, smart agriculture, it's fantastic because there are more and more fertilizers, which is organic fertilizers, and which really help to fight uh, some pests. Actually, uh, for example, all this uh, already discovered for many years, this yellow stickers which put on, on tea plantations to, or some uh, you know, ultrasound uh, and some, some other electronic equipment uh, which can be put on plantation and to fight the uh, bugs. And uh, this also helps. I do believe that, uh, yeah, of course these standards are pretty high and I hope that later the standards will be also implemented in Asian countries too. But it must be done by steps, not as a shocking uh, steps which some European uh, people do now, like for some Parliament in Netherlands, like <laughs> implemented pretty strict, uh, how to say, uh, laws against farming, farming, and it's pretty was pretty successful because I'm living in Netherlands and I know some families really struggling about that, uh, and uh, it's difficult, and uh, yeah, but uh, step by step it's needed because we need a green planet anyway, and uh, we need to find more sustainable uh, and more, um, how to say, more balanced to the nature uh, ways of agriculture. And what I want to say also about tea, uh, there is a actually very interesting, enthusiastic project in Netherlands. Uh, they grow tea green in green tents in Europe, in Netherlands, in France, in Belgium, and Germany. <laughs> uh, for now, it's still kind of, you know, the aroma and fragrance of this tea because the soil is a, uh, is a man-made soil, you know, it's not a natural soil. It's still not the same quality and the same uh, how to say, performance of the products yet. But uh, it's still an interesting initiative that they can grow in very small green tents and few layers even like a tea <laughs> in green tents. It's something interesting. Also the same with different products. The Netherlands pretty experienced it in this uh, new technology and smart agriculture, whatever. Uh, so I do believe there is a lot of opportunities to build more sustainable uh, tea production for the planet, because actually when I'm traveling a lot across uh, the farmlands and I see how the forest is devastating and how I've seen maybe most disastrous picture I've seen in Paraguay, uh, because we also have a yerba mate, and I see like uh, the big trucks just destroying the, all the selva to plant soya, and uh, they destroy anything. The birds, uh, the rivers, not, nothing, just only refilled after that. 
and uh, this problem are growing and uh, yeah they have this uh, climate change problems and some other issues and uh, I think uh, later there'll be more steps needed uh, to improve this more responsible agriculture yeah maybe more questions uh, so uh, I want to ask you in English both and also in uh, Chinese Mandarin is that okay uh, since you can have the tea material in mainland China and the uh, working labor cost is much lower in mainland than Taiwan, as you know. Yeah. Uh, so you can make the products in Taiwan, like just the packaging and like the, how to make the tea um, more tasty, mm -hmm. the last step, I mean. And, um, and the most things are done in the mainland. Um, so that will help like uh, for other products, not only tea, like to sell a much higher price. Mm -hmm. That's my point of view. 就是在中国如果说得到这个茶叶跟种植然后再把这个茶叶运送到台湾去做进一步的加工这样的话会不会更好谢谢你 Ah, uh, 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 how uh, I will reply in English. <laughs> Just yeah, and, and I really I, I so miss China for these years because uh, luckily I, tomorrow I fly to Taiwan and hopefully China, mainly China also reopen soon and I will get back there also. Yeah, but uh, about their production, actually, I try to search for farmers which have some uniqueness, uh, and also I even share my experience of connection with different farms, with different uh, tea factories uh, between these factories. So, for example, uh, when I see some opportunity of produce different technology in some region, I just share it uh, to the guys. For example, in Luan, in Anhui province, we, we, we produce pretty famous uh, green tea, Luan Guapian. I just say, guys, let's, let's try do some uh, black tea <laughs> from it. And they done, uh, from the same material, they've done black tea. Uh, or huncha, red tea, how we call it uh, uh, properly. Uh, and uh, this red tea, they done pretty perfect. And way before, these farmers and this village never done black tea. And they create kind of new product. Uh, so I pretty not care too much about when I can produce cheaper or more expensive or whatever, because uh, the tea market is very broad. And there is a, some, uh, you know, some uh, customers, most of my customers actually, uh, they don't, uh, how to say, compare. We have some Georgian tea which costs more expensive than Taiwanese tea because of the technology. Uh, and we have some Thai tea which is more expensive than Chinese because of the limited supply. And uh, we have some Taiwanese tea because, which is more expensive than more tastier mainland tea for some point, you know. And there is a, a lot of uh, things like that. And I all the time just simply share that with the customer. And the customer can choose. Uh, maybe it's not super right point in the way uh, of uh, commercial uh, goals, but uh, in the way of building trust between the customer and uh, our company, I think it's a good opportunity because we can easily try. For example, we just uh, put this uh, Thailand GABA tea on the market and people just see, okay, uh, I can compare this GABA tea with Taiwan. Of course, Taiwanese, of course, Taiwanese still may be better in some point, not even better, they're just different. Because it's like gourmet products. You go to this restaurant, you go to that restaurant. Sometimes three seafood are more tasty than Michelin star restaurant. Michelin star restaurant. And uh, yeah, and, uh, and it's still a little bit uh, personal. Because uh, a personal experience, the water you use, the tea where you use, uh, the region you drink, uh, the company you drink, anything is important. You can drink a tea house with uh, properly boiled water from a special source and so on. And after that, you just put the same tea in the mug and you have completely different experience. And uh, through this point, uh, we just try to be all the time focused on to presenting the tea from the origin with the right, uh, how do you say, cost performance. CP value, cost performance value, and uh, with the right, uh, how to say, view on it, the right presentation, right marketing, uh, right information about the production, and so on. And I just let my customers choose because I don't compare. Yeah, of course, we have some tea which you really need for a big market. You know, I need like cheap, poor tea. Of course, I go to Manhai and I have, uh, I buying fresh Shen uh, Mao Cha, sometimes in Laos, sometimes in uh, Linsan region, on uh, some other regions, on Yunnan province, 
uh, like commercial secret, but <laughs> people know. Uh, yeah, but uh, and I just bring it to Manhai and I just make post fermentation in Manhai, or I do it in Menku, or I do it in Hyundai, where the free uh, Shupu regions. And if I do it big amounts, of course, I compare the pricing and I search for better pricing. But the things that I, I don't like so much, actually, uh, because I don't like to work with the consumer market. Uh, I like to work with the premium market, mostly. And uh, this is why uh, we have a different uh, partners. Also, we have projects with herbal teas, with our herbal tea cakes, which we press uh, pretty similar to poor tea. We press our, on our own machine, square-shaped uh, herbal teas and also square-shaped uh, uh, Georgian tea, actually. We still see the Georgian tea factory in, in the movie. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a way of presenting uh, pretty openly. So people can easily buy tea for, you know, in Amsterdam shop, you can see on the one line, tea for 3.5 euro and tea for 500 euro, for 100 gram. On the same place. People shocked because, oh, I need a special shop for Lexus. It can be placed together with Toyota. For me, it's not this way. It's a, maybe it's strange, but it works. And the main proof of uh, what this works, it's just a success of what we're doing. This is the way I am just present. Sometimes some teas are super expensive for no reason. Uh, this means that I only buy it for one time. And if customers say, okay, I'm not working with that, okay, we just stop this experiment. So we have a line of the tea which must be present in assortment all the time for affordable price. Okay, this is the one part of assortment. The second part of assortment is our premium line. And the third part is experimental line which are all the time different. Yeah, this I can say about the marketing. Thank you. Yeah. Since I've been listening to your um, big business, I think I was wondering if there are any collaborations between Moisha IT mm -hmm. with uh, another um, product such as um, the candles. Uh -huh. um, I always love candles. Uh -huh. with, uh, the, the tea smell of uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. So I was wondering if you make a collaboration between mm -hmm. your business and other business, mm -hmm. for example, like a soap or, mm -hmm. um, you know, skincare. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, we already had uh, some projects, like we made a soap with tea before, uh, but uh, of course it's not now, uh, how to say, main line, because we have uh, a lot of our own small production. Even we have our own carpenters, we do tea trays in furnishing for the houses. And uh, we do, as already mentioned, in the herbal teas and ceramics and uh, tea production like here in Georgia and so on. Uh, and of course, uh, well, there was uh, some opportunities for cooperation, maybe we don't, don't get into that yet, but I hope uh, later it will be possible because when you don't have your own production, uh, your own factory, it's a little bit more difficult if you're just a retail company. But as soon as we started, last two years, we only started these uh, production projects. It's pretty new and uh, I do believe, of course, we can uh, think about uh, new our own products and also cooperation with different uh, brands uh, for mutual promotion and uh, we do that now uh, uh, mostly on base of kind of uh, social media collaboration uh, so for some bloggers who do similar things uh, for some bloggers for example who have their own line of cosmetics which are also mentioned uh, just uh, cross posting whatever or invite them to a tea house in Amsterdam and they just uh, enjoy tea ceremony and share the experience. Uh, so this uh, kind of uh, micro-influencing marketing we also pretty strong in it. Uh, but uh, of course it can be more professional if we co collaborate from the factory perspective like to produce something together and I think it's a good opportunity later as soon as someone gets go to us with some offer we can easily talk about that uh, why not it's good idea and I, I, I really sure that in close uh, one two years uh, we want to open retail uh, hub in Thailand because I really see the huge opportunities here for tea uh, because uh, what we've seen also Philip mentioned with coffee for example like uh, around a decade ago uh, there was no coffee shops in so big amount like all this uh, third fourth day of coffee making and pretty good quality coffee and so on of these roasting companies uh, and I do believe it can be simply same but different, same same but different with tea. Yeah, I see that uh, there's a lot of opportunities, uh, especially uh, because uh, it's local production and they have our tea bar concept, um, all these cold tea concepts, uh, which is uh, simply different from all this bubble tea. 
uh, concept, but uh, still, I do believe it's it's uh, different. It's just different. So, so yeah, we will do something different, 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 <laughs> different, and we will co cooperate with someone who will be interested to cooperate. So, uh, at last, would you mind sharing um, how to get your product, like, um, or can get it uh, now in ICDI from you? So sorry, I don't understand the last word. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ah, ah, if yeah. uh, you just want to have a little trial for that kind of product ah. you produce. Oh, I, yeah. s I think we can organize later some kind of t-testing. Maybe Leo, Leo, you can? <laughs> I think we will organize because uh, my partner Leo, he lives here in Chiang Mai. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's easy to do, just we need to plan with Philip. Uh, who invited me here and uh, literally it's possible and uh, later because in March I will be also present here maybe we plan some event for March like more like tea testing event also with kind of lecture and, and explaining more about tea and the values of tea and so on I really open to that and I really appreciate uh, the feedback uh, for this lecture this lecture later also we will post it on my YouTube uh, channel and uh, yeah and also yeah I was pretty pleased to meet all of you and thank you to all the questions. Thank you for inviting me and uh, hopefully I will get back here again <laughs> with some news. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.